Hello everybody, my name is Ozzy, and welcome to my series on Rust Electricity for Beginners. Now this really is designed for those players who have gotten onto Rust, tried to do electricity, and have really kind of thought, you know, I don't have any clue what I'm doing. So we're going to try and break it down as simply as we possibly can over a series of videos. And for this first one, the goal is to try to understand where power comes from and how to store it. So we're going to talk about some different ways to generate power and how to store them. First off, we're going to talk about batteries. There are three in Rust. The large battery you see here, the medium, and the small. Now these have a different footprint, but they also have a few other different things. We can't really see a whole lot of information about this until we equip a wire tool, which is available at a tier one workbench for just a couple of high qual. And then we can see now what the charge, the active usage, max output and capacity is on a battery. But first, you would kind of need to know that the RWM that you'll see for uh, power and items in Rust, what that means is a Rust Watt minute. And essentially, that's a way of them saying, here's how we've classified power in Rust. You can just call it power, you can call it Rust Watts, you can call it whatever you like. Easiest way for me to think about it is to just, here's a number of what needs to go in and how much can I run it off of a circuit that I do. And you'll kind of learn how to start thinking that way over the course of this series. So right now we don't get a whole lot of information out of this other than the max capacity on a battery is 24,000 power. And right now this battery has a capacity of a little over 2,200. And the maximum output is 100. Well, right now we don't really have a gauge of what that means. So let's plug it into something. We plug it into this electric furnace, amazing item, by the way. We'll see that, oh, well now we're active usage is three. So what that means is that furnace is using three power. If our at max output is 100, that means we could probably run 33 furnaces off of this battery all at once. That doesn't necessarily tell us how long we could run them. That's just the maximum amount of items that we could power at one time from this one battery. The charge left at the top is essentially telling us, hey, if you don't plug in anything else and you don't charge this battery up anymore, this is the amount of time you'll have left until this battery is completely drained. So we can run this one furnace for almost 12 and a half hours. Now the max output and the capacity is different for each battery. So the medium battery has a max capacity of 9,000, max output of 50. So it's good if you're doing a couple of auto turrets, plus furnaces, maybe a couple of lights, but it's not gonna run an entire compound. And then a small battery has a max output of 15 with a capacity of 400. And what that means is really you're limited to maybe a couple of furnaces, maybe some lights, somewhere around there. Maybe an emergency Tesla for a little bit of scare, not really being able to do a whole lot, but you can fit a lot of them into a little base. So if you keep coming across these and you have a way to power them, but you don't have access to the medium battery yet, it's still quite useful. You just might end up with a few different circuits. And we'll go over that a little bit more when we cover batteries further in a future video. One side note tangent is can we please fix the light leakage on the animation in the medium battery? I love the medium battery so much, especially now that it fits under a shelf. And I love the animation on it, but I don't like that you can see the light through walls and floors. Okay, rant is over. On a battery, you have two uh, connections. One is the output from the battery where you connect it to other objects to, produ to provide power. And one is the input that you will connect to your generator of cho choice in order to power to charge up the battery. Now talking about generators, we're gonna start here with a uh, literal generator. Now this won't turn on no matter how much I press the button until I put some low grade fuel in there. Now this low grade fuel will give me 40 power no matter how much fuel I put in. This 40 power will continue to be produced as long as I have fuel in there. This is what we call steady state power. It's gonna give you 40 no matter what you do. It's similar to a battery, except you're fueling it instead of recharging it. There are other cool things you can do here, such as telling it when to start or when to stop based on other conditions that you can do with different components. We'll go over that in a future video. One other thing you have are solar panels. Now solar panels care about how they're placed and where the sun is. They also care about seasons and such, but we'll get more into that in a future video. Essentially, the most a solar panel can get is 20 power, 
anywhere down all the way down to zero, such as nighttime, or if it's blocked, such as this one behind a wall, or if it's behind a mountain, it's not going to produce anything because the sun can't reach it. Now, right now, the sun is a little bit to my right, so even though these look like they would get about the same amount of sun, this one's actually getting four power, well, three now power more than the other one. Another thing important about solar panels is that if they're damaged, such as this one has just lost about 10% of its durability. It's now gone down to 17 power instead of the 20 that it was at before. However, if you fix that back up, it'll be right back up to high power. So if you ever feel like you're not getting enough power from your solar panels, panels check their positioning and check to make sure they're not damaged. This is what we consider to be a variable power input because it fluctuates on how much power it provides compared to the stable state of the generator. Now some interesting things to note are items that produce power but only for a brief moment. For example if I press this button you'll see a 2 pop up on this counter. Well that's not really good for a whole lot but it's great for activating things such as switches, door openers which will open and then immediately close and a few other things. Similarly this uh, Hang on, I'm going to start reloading this. Uh, this pressure plate here will give me one power for a brief moment. Well, let me move that cursor so you can see that again. It'll give me one power for a brief moment, and even though I'm still standing on it, it goes away. So also similar, it's good for triggering things, but not for really producing power. It would take you a very long time of jumping on this to do any kind of charging of a battery. Now the reactive target is interesting because it will produce power when it drops only for a brief moment and it's traditionally used for like adding scoring and stuff but there are some interesting things you can do with trap bases with that too. Now the last thing we're going to talk about is windmills. Now windmills do care how high up they are in the sky but only in terms of by man-made structure. If you have two windmills that are on the ground but on the ground at different elevations they're probably going to produce about the same amount of power um, but if you actually build upward and put one in the sky, it will produce more. For example, this one on the left is giving me 79. The one on the right is giving me 108. So this isn't the highest you can build. Um, you can build higher, but it still is going to fluctuate depending on time of day, what the wind is doing in the environment and things like that. The maximum a windmill can go up to is 150 power at a time, but it also is a fluctuating state. It's just not dependent on the sun so it will still provide power throughout the night. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. I hope that was helpful for you. If you learned something from this, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to see any more videos in the series. And if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section down below. And I will see you all next time.